Hello, we are going to talk about the helix operation in the PATH workbench. I've prepared the body with several round holes with different diameters, different depths and two holes, one which is rounded at the ends and a square hole so I can show you how you can mill these holes using a helix but not actually the helix operation. I'll explain it to you at the end of this video. First of all I have to create a job. I select the body, click on the job button make sure the body is selected, click OK. I'm checking to see if the placement of the body is as it should be, everything is OK, so I go to the tools, add the tool, let's say a 6mm end mill, give it a horizontal and vertical speed, a spindle speed of course, and now I can remove the default tool, go to output and select the proper processor grpl and i can click ok to close the job it is now created i can hide the body and show the model of the job now i have to select the job and click the helix button as you can see i have an error here that is because three of my holes are six millimeters in diameter with a tool of six millimeters so i have to go to the base geometry and select all the 6 mm diameter holes, keeping the control key pressed and then pressing remove. Now as you can see I have a helix operation for each of the holes that can be made using this tool bit. For these 6 mm holes I should probably use a smaller tool bit but we'll talk about that later. So when I click OK you can see that I have all the helixes made but looking through the body the first problem that I notice is that all the holes are drilled just to the depth of the smallest one. When double clicking the operation and going to the depth tab I can see that I only have one final depth value that is kind of normal so I'll have to split this into several operations. For each depth of hole I have to create a separate operation. Clicking on them highlights them in the body so I can easily notice which one I should delete. Let's delete this one. Delete actually doesn't work pressing the delete key you have to click on remove and this one too because if I don't remove this one it will go deeper into these three holes but it won't reach the bottom so I'll remove this one too and now as you can see the holes will be drilled all the way now let's create another operation for this hole selecting the face actually doesn't work for helix it always generates the list with all the holes that are possible to to drill using the helix so I have to manually delete all the others each time click on remove and now I have my hole here you can see the other path is actually from the first helix so I'll hide it you can see the second one now going all the way to the bottom of this small hole let's hide this one too I'm just hiding them not disabling them if I want to actually disable these operations I have to click on this button which changes their state from active to inactive now they are not visible and they won't be processed when exporting the file for now I'll leave them active and just press space to hide them so you can see better. Now let's create the third helix for this larger hole. Let's go to base geometry. You can see here a list of diameters so it's easy to find which one of them is this one. Remove all the others and as you can see it will make several passes to mill this hole. Of course I can change the step down it's a value that is going to be rounded so it will divide the, the difference between the start and the final depth to the step down and round the step down to the closest number. The heights are the clearance and safe height that are controlled from the job. Of course I can manually change them from here but I don't think it's a safe uh, way to do it because all the other operations in the job will still have the default safe height and clearance height. And on the operation tab I have a tool controller, the coolant controller of course. The One of the most important values is start from. I have two options outside and inside. It's pretty obvious what this value does. It tells where to start first milling. On the center of the hole or on the outside. Let me explain you what the difference between these two options are. Because uh, it's a pretty big difference depending on the machine or on the tool bit it can lead to different results so let's leave it with outside click ok close the helix let's disable these other two helix operations and now let's go to the simulator and click on play 
you can see it starts milling from the outside and uh, it's going to the center of the hole. This represents a problem if the material is fragile, the little piece in the middle can get broken and run around in the hole and damage your cutter or the walls or so on. As you can see the cutter head touches the material on both sides of the cut. This means that the hole will be closer to the required diameter because there's a lower chance for deflection. If I go to my helix operation and tell it to start from inside, go back to the simulator again, you can see that it will start from the center. This means that there will be no danger of small bits of material flying around in the hole. But when milling the outside of the hole, there's a chance the toolbit might have a small deflection to the inside of the hole, resulting in a slightly smaller diameter overall. So depending on the case, you might want to use outside or inside, depending on the material you're processing, what uh, tolerances you have and so on. You can see I also have direction clockwise or counterclockwise. This means climb cut or conventional cut, but it is dependent on the spindle direction. If the direction of the helix is the same as the cutter, so let's say I have a clockwise spinning spindle and the direction is clockwise, it will generate a conventional cut. If I select counterclockwise with a clockwise spindle, this will generate a climb cut. Again, depending on the situation, depending on the material, depending on the finish you want to achieve, one of these two options uh, might suit uh, better than the other. The step over percent, of course, as any other operation, just like at milling faces, pockets and so on, is the percentage of overlapping two consecutive passes. I tend to use higher values because there is no chance for leftover material in the corners. Since it's round, we don't have any corners. The extra offset, as the name says, you can increase or decrease the diameter of the hole. If I put a value, let's say, of one millimeter here, you can actually see it reduces in diameter and if I go with a negative value it will make the hole bigger. So that's a good thing to remember. The extra offset is not referring to the diameter of the hole but actually the diameter of the leftover material from the body. I think that's the best explanation for why a positive value will result in a smaller hole and the negative value will result in a larger hole. Okay so now I have my operations for these holes, the larger ones, but I still have three holes with a six millimeters diameter, which actually can be processed using a helix. Let's hide these three operations. Let's actually deactivate them. And if I create a new helix and leave just the six millimeters diameter holes, you can see I'll have an error cannot helix a hole of diameter 6 with a tool of diameter 6 recompute failed. I'll just click OK. It has an error of course. And since my projects are usually woodworking where 0.01 millimeters is an acceptable tolerance, I usually do a trick. I go to the tools controller, double click on the tool bit and set its diameter to 5.99 millimeters. So now you can see I have a helix with a 0.01 oscillation on the cutter head. This will result in some vibrations in the CNC but generally it works okay, it does the hole as it should. You'll have to take into account that changing the diameter for this tool bit will change it for all the operations. So what I have to do to be safe, go to the job, go to the tools tab, click on add, add another 6mm end mill and rename it as 6 millimeters slightly smaller. Give it the same horizontal and vertical speed, the same spindle speed. Okay, and now I have two tools here. You can see the 6 millimeters end mill and the 6 millimeters slightly smaller. Let's go to the first one and replace what we've changed previously. Let's set its diameter back to 6 millimeters. And for the second one that I've created especially for these three holes, let's give it a 5.99 millimeters. And now I can go to my helix and select the second tool controller. And as you can see, everything is okay now. It's a hack and it's a hack that I have to use because I cannot use the drill cycle. My CNC, my fluid NC CNC doesn't support the G codes for drilling. Okay, let's disable this operation too and now let's go back to our piece and let's handle these two operations also. I want to mill them using a helix too, but trying to create a new helix operation, I can see that I simply cannot add the geometry to this list. For milling this type of holes using a helix, I select the bottom of the hole, go to a pocket operation, set it as usual, offset, 
step over percentage, let's say 80%. And you can see I have my operation with all these layers and so on. So now I have my pocket and I can go to path, path dress up, ramp entry. You can see it created a ramp entry, but just to the beginning of the layer. To make a helix out of this operation, I have to click on the ramp entry, go to its data tab and change the ramp uh, method to helix. And now when clicking OK, you can see I actually have a helix. This applies also for square pockets or any other operation. I select the bottom of the hole, go to pocket shape, make sure the tool controller is correctly selected so I don't have the smaller diameter one, change the pattern to offset, change the step over to 80%, actually since the hole is pretty small I don't think this makes a difference and now I have my pocket operation, select it, go to path, path dress up, ramp entry, it created a ramp lowering the tool bit just to the beginning of the layer and then it's going to fill the layer flat as you can see, but I want a helix for this operation, it's faster and it smells better, so I can go to the ramp entry dress up, make sure it's selected, go to the data tab and change the method variable to helix. Now you can see I actually have a helix for my square hole. And now let's simulate these two operations, go to the cam simulator and click on play. You can see it actually goes in a helix movement. The first one was very slow because I have rounded edges here. So let's disable the first one. And now let's play the simulator again for this one with a, of course a lower speed. You can see it's going down in a helix motion even though my hole is square. Well, almost square because of course it will have rounded corners equal to the diameter of the tool bit. So that's all you need to know about the helix operation. It's very useful, especially when you don't have a rigid machine, but you have to know that probably the hole will not be the correct diameter. So you'll have to adjust by using the extra offset value. I remind you extra offset, a positive value is going to result in a smaller hole. A negative value for extra offset will enlarge the hole slightly. Thank you for watching and see you next time.